Hello, welcome to the big show. Yeah, it's time to talk about the big stories that have gone on in tech, everything that's happened, all the shiz, uh, all that's gone on. And there's a, the, we might have a fight tonight because there's, there's uh, not with each other because we love each other, but we might have a fight with a couple of companies who've done some stuff that we, that's just a bit. <clears throat> I guarantee someone's brought that story. Joining me, the panel to end all panels, starting us off. I'll, I'll keep going to call you Big Chris Ashley, but you're Little Chris Ashley now, aren't you? Well, you know, it depends from perspective, right? Perspective. How you doing, man? I, I think big is still appropriate. I'm just in a different way now. I yeah, missed you, I'm man. Still bigger than most humans, I would think. I missed you, and, man. Where you been? You're my brother. I'm another mother. Hey, man. I yeah, listen, you guys have been on my mind, my heart, and I was like, I got to come hang out with my people. Yes. The stars aligned, and your boy is here. <sighs> but but things have been great, you know. Brothers on the on the up. You know, just been traveling a bit. Uh, daughter's doing so well in uh, gymnastics, and now she's doing basketball. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and so she's just super busy. She made honors choir. So oh, man. nice. Four, like, they picked like four kids from each school, and uh, she was one of them that I got picked, and she really wanted it. So she, uh, she, so just, you know, so, you know, all, you know, you got all this turmoil, but then you got these, these things that like, you know, make you smile and, uh, you know, still working out, still, you know, keeping up my diet, still, still trying to get this last 50 pounds off. Uh, so yeah, man. So I'm good, man. So I'm glad to be here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for always considering me. I really appreciate it. That's right, man. You're always welcome on here. You just got to get your ass down here and do it. That's all. Hey, that's it. Um, uh, Batwench has just posted in the chat room. She's moved all of her services over to TSO host. Nice. Hey, website in the lot. Uh, no, she just says she, needs, she just needs to update the website. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> but well done. No, no, Merle, shut up. God, can't take him any. He's only. He, I, 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 I thought I was missing him this afternoon, but now he's turned up. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about someone who's been busy this afternoon, Jeffrey Gamut, fresh off a Mac show, fresh off a beginner's webinar on Text Expander, and then straight into the big show, mate. Awesome. It's uh, th- that sums up my entire day so far. Yeah, yeah, excellent, mate. Thank you so much for your uh, for your um, time. Because, well, I, I was going to say we couldn't do this show without you, but actually, most of the podcasts on iTunes wouldn't happen without you. You know, someone's got to keep this industry afloat. Yeah, I'd like to think we're special, but we're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are special. You're a podcast shag bag, aren't you? That's the thing. Well, there there is that, but it yeah. doesn't mean you're not special. Thanks, man. At the moment that you're with me, I'm Mister Right Now. You you are so Mister Right Now. Thanks, man. And of but course, in a great way. Smile Software and Jeffrey have been kind enough to give BTN listeners an offer code for Text Expander. So if you're thinking about a snippet system, then go for Text Expander for sure. Because if you use the offer code BTN 2020, you get twenty percent off. Thanks, man. And that's, that's oh, sure. going to be around for a while yet. So if you're thinking about it, I'm in an R in. Stop. Go buy it. 20% off. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks, Smile Software, for doing that. I've got your back. Uh, now, this is a surprise because normally I'd say Muller last but not least, but he's not. He's actually the next one in the rotation. How are you doing, buddy? You said you were tired today, though, didn't you? I love the fact that your old employer asked you if you wanted to come back for a job today and offered you a night shift from 6 p.m. to 2 p.m. and thought that you were going to give a, an answer which wasn't colourful. <laughs> Are you thinking about putting your microphone on or not? That's a new level of microphone oh, technique, right. mate. I'm pretty sure I turned it on earlier. <laughs> <laughs> microphone technique 101. Um, and we, we think it's because you can't lean in close enough, but it's no, you actually haven't switched it on. Yeah, well, there you go. Oh, it's working now. <laughs> the clue was in your ears. <laughs> I'm just disappointed you haven't asked me to go to any one of your rooms with uh, with Chris and Jeff. I mean, me and me and Patrice are feeling rather left out. What rooms? Well, you two. I mean, it's been a big loving. <laughs> uh, I've missed I've missed my boy, and and Jeff's a commitment fan. And I mean, you, you've come over. You you you're tired, yet you've still come over. There's your commitment. Yeah, right? I know. I just you know we're just feeling like a bit left out. Me and Patrice. I mean. You know, all the man love going around. Well, I haven't got a chance to get to Paris, but oh, you're welcome here, mate. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and last but by no means least, Patrice, in slightly less echoey studio apartment, but still... It's still very echoey. <laughs> oh, mate. 
<laughs> oh, mate. You'll get there, pal. You'll get there. We'll get there, yeah. Chin I mean, up. lights and everything still coming in. Like, more stuff coming in. You can't get Funny. down, mate, when you know you got mates over this side of the pond that can laugh at you and take the piss out of you. Exactly. For adversity. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Good, man. Keep your chin up, mate. You'll be there. Right. Will do. Uh, the Week in Tech. Um, what's been going on? What's been happening? Someone's shoved a story in already. No, no one shoved a story in yet. It was Muller. Um, uh, who's who's going to start us off then? Do you want to... <laughs> Okay. Boom. Ooh. It's, it, oh. oh, oh no! It's 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 a fight for who's got the. St- oh, it's the same story. Oh, Mother, it's the same story. <laughs> and okay. you've well, got I to think back up. tag team it with you. So if we're going to do a one hour and one and a half hour show, this is one hour <laughs> twenty five minutes of it one, straight it? away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeffrey got there first, so Jeffrey took a uh, Sonos speaker up. This was, I, why did you know this was going to be story one? I don't. I, <sighs> you just, you know. The, the crazy thing is I knew someone would bring this story, even if it wasn't oh, of me. Course. And yet I didn't have a backup story. Oh, I have luckily. <laughs> That's why you were so fast on the fingers. Cause you knew you had one chance and one chance yeah, alone. I was kind of screwed if I, if I didn't mm. get in first. Hello, righty boy. Right. I'm going to say righty for- boys watch it. Uh, righty dial in on line five. Uh, yeah. Dial on, dial in on line five. If you want, mate. Yeah. I'm going to save righty to be there. You'd have got no chance of getting that story. Um, so Jeffrey, yeah, this is the, this has poached a lot of venom, hasn't it? This week, man, people are flipping out over this. Um, so the, the short version is, Sono sent out an email to to their customers saying, "Hey, you know, if you if you have some of our older technology or you know older products, you're not going to get any more software updates for them because we just can't." continue to support the older stuff. And if you have newer products and they're mixed in on the same network as older products, your newer products won't get software updates either. So the, so the only way to continue to get software updates is to take all of the old gear that Sonos has off of your network and either just not have it or replace it. And uh, so people are flipping out saying, you know, this is ridiculous. Why shouldn't I not be able to have new features on the new on the new components that I have, even if it's not supported on the older stuff? And uh, and then some people are saying, look, this is Sonos killing off the products. And and uh, and in some cases saying that the that the old stuff will stop working, which is not the case. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of people that are pissed off because they're they're looking at this and and. And seeing this as Sonos telling customers, "Look, if if uh, if you want to keep using our products, you just need to buy new stuff." That that's that's the basic message that a lot of people are taking out of the Sonos announcement. Oh man, I, I just think there's uh, there's going to have to be someone play devil's advocate for this, and I don't think <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't, to, I, don't, I don't want to be the one that's on the wrong side of that. <laughs> you know, now I don't have any skin in this game because I I'm not a Sonos user. So, you know, my my take on this is there it takes a lot of resources to support everything that you make. And at some point, older technology just has to be left behind. There, there's no way around it. And that means for some people it'll be a painful thing, and for some people it won't. And and I think the the bigger problem here is that Sonos didn't find a uh, uh, a nicer or friendlier way to uh, to put this information out there, and so it just it <laughs> came across poorly. It, it does co- it, it does come across like they've actually gone right. Hands up who can play music on their Sonos. Ah, not so quick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, this is a messaging problem, really. semi psychic nightmare, though, isn't it? I mean, there's going to be loads of people who will take them up on their offer of 30% discount. And then what's going to happen to all this, all this plastic and metal? I mean, half these machines are only seven years old. Yeah, this is where I've got a problem with it, because it, basically mm. you're making a product which is using an awful lot of natural resources and which then is, is of completely no use whatsoever, and it just becomes a doorstop or a brick or a piece of landfill and, and that's not okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't agree with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think Jeff Jeff is right. I mean, it's a PR disaster. It's also, like, it makes sense. At some point, you have to decide what you want to do. Like, if you want to offer new features, I mean, 
Sonos already didn't ship, I think, AirPlay 2 and stuff like that for the newer, de- for the older devices because, like, supposedly because they couldn't, probably also for marketing reasons. Um, but like, ultimately, at some point, you have to have to cut ties and say, okay, this is like we want to do new stuff, we want to do more exciting stuff, and we can't do that if we string along like ten-year-old devices. What they should have done though is like find a way to keep them running like simply say okay you won't yeah. like you won't be able to use i don't know the latest sonos app you won't be able to use the latest features but here is a whatever sonos classic that still like does the job sound like that that would have been i think the right way to do especially if the devices are only seven year old seven years old i think that is that's kind of pushing it a little bit especially for a speaker especially for an expensive speaker so this is a tough one for me. I was just thinking, I, Chris has been remarkably quiet here. I expected you yeah. sooner than <laughs> now. Uh, because I'm so torn, right? Because I manage software, right? And so mm-hmm. I've been on both sides of this of this type of issue where people want me to upgrade. Uh, like I had, I had a, a piece of software that was extremely popular in the enterprise world, and it got to the point where the underlying code was so old that we could no longer update it to work on newer versions of Windows servers. It just surpassed us and we just couldn't get it to work, not without like a a significant rewrite, which at that point we might as well just build a whole new product. And so we were in a position where we had to kind of pivot and start building a new product which means you know you can't just take all your settings and the features that every single feature that existed in the old software and into the new one. So I I, I kind of feel for Sonos in this regard because sometimes it's just unfortunate that the architecture that you started out with that worked so well and you're like, okay, this is what we're going to do because this works great for how we want things to work. It can't be brought forward based on mm-hmm. uh, new standards. On the other side, unfortunately... I don't always trust these companies to for that's why. And that's the sad part is because we know that, you know, a lot of times they just won't update stuff to force you to mm-hmm. buy new features. I mean, HP was guilty of that, right? With their printers. Um, I believe it was them. I, I, can't I think printers are a little bit different because of the, the inks and the fact that actually most print, printer manufacturers are the spawn of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> the, those are drivers with the Vista, right? They didn't want to develop mm-hmm. new drivers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. for Vista and you know Vista took a bad rap you know for that aspect I mean it had other challenges but still so I, I kind of torn on it and I and the thing is I'm kind of glad this is happening now because I'm actually been very interested in Sonos over the last two years I've been kind of watching it I've got friends that use those to uh, use the use it and love what they what they get out of it and uh, so I've been actually considering uh, diving into Sonos and getting a couple speakers over a, a period of time. And that's, the, I think, the biggest part of this that kind of sucks, right? Because a lot of people aren't just going to go drop $4,000 for an entire house of Sonos stuff. They're going to build it over a period of time. So you're building over a period yeah. of time, yeah. but you're not finished, and now you've got to junk some of the devices. So that part, yeah. I, I don't know why you would have to remove older devices to in order to update ones that are still covered. That does that part doesn't really make sense to me. I, mean, I, I would mm-hmm. assume you'd be able to detect a version and just say, okay, this one gets the update and this one does not. So that part yeah, doesn't right. make sense to me. Which from there leads me more to believe that this is a more ploy than software. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to end up on in landfill though. Like, I mean. The plastic can be recycled, and like the the boards in there. No, no, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about junking it, you know, rather than as in just stop using it, rather than mm. actually physically going into a landfill. And that's not that was a bit too literal, okay. but I, the, so the thing for me is is at the end of the day, it's a speaker that lets you play your music. And the problem that they started with was they went down a path of a mesh network, not a Bluetooth device, and therefore you were tied to an app that linked the thing and created a mesh network within your home network. And now they've added Bluetooth to it. So actually the series two stuff, you could just play as a Bluetooth speaker without the, the app, couldn't you? But you can't with the original stuff. So that's um, th- it was Wi-Fi. So it wasn't like, it wasn't a separate network. 
It was a mesh. It was it created its own mesh network, didn't you? So you no. could link the speakers together. Uh, you didn't no. have you, yeah. You didn't have to have a Wi-Fi network. You could link the speakers together and play it from the iPhone. Now. I'm pretty so sure you I could. Remember it, the it, ones I set up definitely were linked to my Wi-Fi. Yeah, that you you did, but I'm sure you could set up a mesh network where the speakers linked to each other, mm. and that was the whole point. Um, but the thing is, it, it's it's like it's just a speaker that plays my music. And that's the hard part, is that I've got loads of speakers that play the music because their functionality is basically down to Bluetooth. And until you get rid of Bluetooth, they still mm-hmm. work. <laughs> but th- th- So now I'm just sitting thinking, well, look, if this thing doesn't update, that's fine. If I keep an old phone and I keep an old copy of the Apple. app, but then you're kind of like, well, actually, the app will start to look for updates for itself and say you can no longer use this app. Mm. Right. And that's where I've got a real problem with it. Is, is As you said, Chris, if you said, right, we're going to issue the Sonos Classic app, and that will deal with everything up to Series 2, um, but anything before that um, uh, is, is on the Classic app, and then everything's going to have to go in the new app that comes afterwards. Yeah, fine. I think that I've got no problem with that. But for, to say that you're going to spend £500 on a speaker, and then in seven years someone's going to tell you that speaker will no longer play music, there is an awful lot of fall load in that. Mm-hmm. There is an awful lot of saw you coming, boy, because that ain't right. It's just a speaker that plays your friggin' music. Yep. I mean, I still have my sound system that I bought when I bought this house 15 years ago, and it still sounds great. I'm never getting rid of that system. You yeah. know, I spent a ton of money on it um, at the time. You know, it was like $2,000. I wasn't making $2,000 money to be buying speakers, but I saved up and bought them. And uh, yeah, and I still use them. So, you know, seven years is way too short of a lifespan my dad uh, has for, got for something that expensive my dad's got a Philips Dynatron system that still plays vinyl and it sounds <laughs> amazing mm-hmm. and it's, oh, it's older than me it's older than me my brother still uses my uh, old NAD hi- uh, hi-fi system well the amplifier yeah and he's got my old deck which probably dates back to 77 and my old BMW speakers not BMW B and W. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they, uh, he had to change them last year because um, one of the dogs ran into the speaker and put the cone through. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Should have left the cover on. <laughs> Should have had the dog put down. Um, they look so cool without the cover, though. Yeah. They really do. <laughs> yeah. Much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I get where the Venom's coming from, and I think there is an awful lot of justification in it. There mm-hmm. really is. I mean, a it's not done bad, done well. I agree with both you guys there, but but it's just like it's just a speaker that plays your music. That's got to come back to the original thing. It's it's. I mean, you, you, I've I've still got Muller's given me his uh, hi fi for my little Mac collection here. Um, I can only get it to play with um, my iPhone three GS plugged in the top, and it won't charge anymore. I have to charge the three up first, and then put it in and play it. But it still plays. You can put a line in. There's a lot as a, um, a port at the back to put a headphone jack in. No, it, it plays through the, just putting the, the three in the slot. Um, but the problem is the slot doesn't give any power to the three anymore, which it used to do, I guess. So, <laughs> might give it to IMN Max, have a look, see if they can fix it. But um, uh, but no, it, it still plays its music and it's it's 15 plus years old now. Yeah, it had a great sound when I bought it. It still has, mate. Trust me, I played it the other day with Richard Hartness when he was down here. So it's, uh, it's excellent. No, not real much word from the. You know, Batman. She's just saying she's crap. She's got. She's happy. She's got a really cheap CV soundbar. Um, uh, Bob Beach says he's still got a Rotel amplifier, which works brilliantly. Um, uh, Most of his stuff works on valves. <laughs> no, Bob's got. Mate, Bob's got everything. Bob's got Sonos. I know he has. But um, yeah, actually, he's found the 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 story from Sonos, like the the release. It's actually they're they're stopping software updates. So like it kind of still works. The question is just how long. Like nobody knows how long it's going to work. But the bad thing is that if you have a newer device, like you have one of the old devices and you have like a new whatever new Sonos Five or like a, a Sonos One, they are not going to get updates either because all like all devices in your network have to be on the same firmware uh, on the same software version. Yeah, that's the divide that gets me. Yeah, yeah, like, that's kind of yeah. bad. <laughs> what I mean, the only thing I can think of is that maybe there's one master, 
and then they all pull from the master and if they, you know they won't be able to communicate anymore with the up the further the new updates maybe they're changing the architecture i can think of things that yeah, may cause that type of scenario but you know you, you would think okay different storage you, you know you you know you master pull send this these files to those speakers and the rest of them pull from this other side there's probably ways around it Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been on, I've had these conversations, right? It's like, what are people going to say when we drop support for this, that, or the other? Even yeah. when you're trying to follow Microsoft guidelines, right? Microsoft kills off a, a version of SQL, and you're like, we're, we're okay, we're not going to waste time yeah. testing against See, that version if I, it's not supported. And then you start getting these emails. Oh, such and such customer who's been with us for 10 years and, you know, spend this, you know, they want you to still support it. You know, it's, I've, I've been there, man. I've been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, think the, the, the problem that you've got is the fact that, that I don't think anyone would care about the their app being updated. It's the fact that the email that they sent out said that your listening experience will be affected. Mm-hmm. And that's the key. Is it, it, that clearly says, I'm sorry, but your speakers are going to stop working. <laughs> and what is going to happen to all these, these uh, uh, speakers? Because apparently they don't want them back. They just turn them off so they can't be used. So what you do, keep them in your loft and hope they're going to be worth some money one day? Uh, or do you just take them well, to the dump and they end up in a landfill? Sonos has a program for, and I'll do air quotes, recycling speakers, where if you, if you buy a new speaker, uh, there's a process you go through to let Sonos know that you bought a new speaker, and then your old speaker, even if it's working perfectly fine, will get bricked. So it's not usable by anyone ever again, and uh, and and then I, I don't know if if they send you a box to put the speaker in and and uh, and ship it off to a recycling center or or what, but um, it it seems like a very short sighted system for dealing with people upgrading equipment because. Yeah. Because if you use that system, you're taking a perfectly good and perfectly working product and intentionally bricking it so it can never be used again. Yeah. Uh, Righty's put in the chat room, Sonos never heard of a network. We have multiple systems and operating systems at work, and we have to work, work, work to keep them up and running. We just pulled mm-hmm. support. We'd be crucified. Not a best way to get repeat customers, says Batwench. Good point. <laughs> yeah, really good point. Mm-hmm. Um, well... I mean, the the end result for me is that even though I've never been a Sonos customer, uh, I found their products intriguing. But at this point, I don't see myself ever buying Sonos products. I have yeah, two because I managed to offload one back to uh, James Ricards the other week, uh, luckily, <laughs> before this happened. Um, bad luck, James. Um, but I, I think, you know, Sonos, audio products are long-lasting. I think one of the things that they've got is that they've had to include this idea of integration in for voice assistants and all that kind of thing with the Zigbee stuff that went into the last module. And that's creating a legacy requirement within it because they have to keep up with that. But actually, I, I never wanted that. I just wanted my speaker to work. I just wanted my speaker to play music from the app that I had. Um, mm-hmm. And I think there's an awful lot of people are sitting there going, well, that's all I do is play music from the app. Why is this a problem? Yeah, and it will like be. my mom. Yeah, all she, all she does is listen to an online radio station. That is it. That's it. Through us on our speakers, and that'll all go away eventually. Yeah, it's, it's, I have to agree with Jeff because uh, this definitely is. You know, even though I don't own a sound speaker, so it doesn't affect me now. It's like I would be pretty pissed in, in another seven years. Or like, well, we got to do the same thing again. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, definitely uh, put a little hitch in my giddy up. Yeah, we're going to um, we're going to obsolete your speakers in seven years, but we're also going to halve our prices. Okay, I get that. At least I'm going in eyes wide open. Sure, mm-hmm. there's only a board mm-hmm. or some electronics inside, and you could open it up and replace the electronics and carry on using the speaker. Well, best of luck with that, mate. Let, let yeah. us, Muller, let us know how you get on with the Stanos speakers you haven't got. Well, I'm just I've I've, I've seen breakdowns of them, and there's not much inside them. Uh, surely they could sell a kit. You just open it up, put the replace the replace the uh, motherboard or whatever it is, and carry on using it. The, the speakers themselves are, are, are good. Are good are only enclosures and normal move. You know, uh, moving cones. I feel a business coming on, Muller. What do you think? Yeah, but you probably need to get licensed somehow. Well, no, because they don't want it anymore. 
<laughs> don't think my electronic That's going to be my defence in the High Court is going to be, well, you said you didn't want it anymore. Not my fault. Mm. <laughs> who's who's uh, Sonos' competition? Do they do they have? Apple? I mean, I know Apple has their speaker. Amazon, but I don't know if it really. Google, Amazon Apple. speakers are going to be bigger, aren't they? Yeah, but, that, mm-hmm. uh, that. Yeah, Apple, Amazon, so uh, Sonos, uh, Sony do some as well. Sonos has always yeah. suffered from being its own environment, though, hasn't it? That's the thing. And now it's done this; it's still stuck in its own environment. It's not an open platform that people can send stuff to. As well, oh, as. Amazon has an Echo Studio. Okay, yeah. I- isn't um, IKEA uh, Bose doing something like this? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes, they are. It, it's, my, my whole home audio setup, and granted, my apartment isn't that big, but um, it's Echo Dots with with uh, bookshelf speakers plugged in. Yeah, perfect. I don't think Bose speakers sound that good. Every time I've, I, I, I've never been, I've never been a fan of Bose speakers, but their headsets I find phenomenal. But their speakers I don't like. Bit mm. bass heavy for me. There's no definition. We we tested them like a couple of years ago, and my mom wanted a system, and like they were horrible. Ex- really expensive, even compared to Sonos, which isn't cheap, and not very good. There's a boat. There's, there's a boat studio by uh, in the ball ring, so I've been in there and listened to mm. them all. Um, they got a proper place where you can sit down, have a cup of coffee, listen to the speakers. I thought it's a shit. We should have had James Records <laughs> on this show because he used to work for Bose. You'd have been squirming about this point. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder used to. <laughs> right, he says, surely people will just go and get 30 quid smart speakers, and if they get screwed by Google Amazon, they can go up for the next one without spending much cash. If my £600 play bar stops working soon, I will be incensed, <laughs> says Bob B. <laughs> yeah, they're not cheap, man. That sound bar, yeah, that, they have two sound bars that are like $700. Yeah, they're not cheap. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Man. Good story. That went on long. We need to cut that one off, otherwise we'll carry on all nights complaining about it. So if someone yeah. else can have another one. <laughs> Patrice paid. What, put one Patrice in. put it in next. Twenty sixteen. Yeah. Yes. Um, Talk so us NASA, NASA actually released or revealed their pay- payloads for the first commercial moon cargo deliveries, which I found really interesting. And they're like they're sending sixteen payloads up. Um, and it's like it's covering anything from like ex- like science experiments, some tech. Like there is a uh, it's called like a lunar node one navigation demonstrator, which is like a navigation an autonomous navigation system for the lunar sur- surface, stuff like that. <sighs> so they're actually trying a lot of also like interesting tech on the moon now. I'm trying to get rid of a freaking go. I hate this look. The Google adverts at the top of the page, and it won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, piss off. You, un- I can't get the... Oh, sod off. Okay. Uh, hasn't ESA and uh, NASA said they want to return back to the moon in the next five years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2024 is the target right now That's for a uh, crew to actually to return to, to the moon. Like the commercial crew, like the, um, like the test flights that are happening right now, that's all in preparation for that, or like in part. And they're going to take a... a uh, that's sort of- a pretty aggressive timetable. Well, I saw a yes. program uh, on British TV, and apparently they want to take this printer up, and it basically uses the moon dust uh, mm-hmm. to make to a make, lab. Yeah, to make yeah, and, yeah. It, and what they're going to do is build if they build it underground, these little blocks will be made, and then mm-hmm. they can cover it with more. Well, uh, no, they've got a three D printer that makes concrete, hasn't it, and squishes it out and yeah. adds the water to it. But you could because yeah. moon dust does look does look like concrete, doesn't it? Or, or, you know, yeah, it, is, it looks like cement. Well, the, uh, they're, they're actually, I think some of the experiments are actually to melt um, it. like actually testing that. There is one that's called SEAL, like a surface, surface exosphere alterations by landers, which like tests um, the response of the, the moon dust by like when the landers land and stuff like that. So uh, there's a lot of like really interesting stuff going on on the moon right now. Like it's kind of like nothing happened on the moon for a long time, and now all of a sudden, like they're sending a bunch of stuff. It's apples yeah, no. it's apples <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. They're, they're probably probably Russians and Americans either side of a crater. <laughs> yeah, no. I'd say I'd, I'd, the thing is, as well, you say it's a pretty aggressive timetable for going back to the moon. Mm-hmm. Uh, at four years and there is a, there is I, I totally get that but there's a bit of me's also going well we've been before 
You know, mm-hmm. this can't be like. Surely we've been before, but a lot of the technology that uh, that we use to get to the moon has been lost. Yeah. And so we have to figure out how to do this stuff again. Yeah, I mean, remember, we haven't been on the moon for how long now? 70 years? How much? 30, 50, 50, 50 years. Mate, you, you can get away with uh, the odd <laughs> slip in English for a second language, but you're not going to get away with a slip, a slip in maths like that. <laughs> yeah, it's 50, about 50 years. Oh, yeah, it's like, been 200 yeah. years since we were last there, definitely. <laughs> King Charles was on oh. the throne. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> No, it's 50 years. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that that means like we've forgotten and lost a lot of things. Technology has changed. Like, I mean, right now the U.S. doesn't have any, like, any capability of sending crew up. Like, it's all the, the Soyuz capsules. I think it's all Russian, Russian right. right now. And, and Soyuz capsules, the, <laughs> Russia doesn't have the technology to go that far with mm-hmm. with their spacecraft. No, they haven't got the propulsion. The Atlas rocket's the only one that's going to get there, isn't it? Or the, the Dragon, the, the SpaceX one. Not use a Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing is as well, though, and we sit here as, as you know, weekend tech pundits sitting going on about, wouldn't it be fantastic if we went back to the moon? And all of us sit and do not think for one second about the fact that if it goes belly up, you die. And that's the right. thing. Is it's like, you know, the um, uh, there was someone said, um, "Has anyone ever had a beer on the on the, the space station?" And Chris Hadfield went, "Why would you do that? Why would you go into the the place where if there's a problem, you've got three breaths to solve it and put alcohol mm-hmm. in your system that would slow you down? Why would you do that?" And no yep, one thinks exactly. Why would you do that? And it, someone says, "Oh, uh, have we had sex in space?" No, I'm too busy making sure that the space is going to pop and I'm going to die from <laughs> rapid decompressurization to think about shagging. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, why would I do that? And it, it, I think that's the thing is, that, as like I say, as, as weekend warriors, we sit here and just think that it's a game going up there, and it really isn't. Apparently, no, it's not. I did see a not program, yet, at least. I did see a program on that. So apparently, you, you can't really have sex in space because oh. uh, you're... Muller, uh, that wasn't a cue for you to postulate about sex in space. That was yeah. me saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying just, apparently you that's my point. don't work right. I think, I think actually, Muller, my point entirely right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have they noted if they have the appetite to send humans uh, along? Because I'm, I'm seeing that these ships are unmanned, and uh, so oh, yeah. uh, have yes, the owner. yeah, that's the yeah. plan for 2024. Like they're sending the unmanned like t- uh, probes and everything, and like preparing everything, and then 2024, 2025, that's when they want to like send people over. But I think you've got to. Yes, you've got they, to. Create. They've already picked the. I think they've already picked the picked the crew. Even like it's already decided who's going to go and all of that. They're going to send the first woman to the moon. That was the plan. Nice. You know when uh, when uh, Apollo Eleven landed on the moon. Even with all the testing that had been done leading up to that first lunar landing. There was no guarantee that the rocket engine on the ascent stage from from the lunar excursion module would actually ignite. Well, they did that on so, ten, though, didn't they? They did a low uh, orbit ejection to check that it would burn out. Yeah, but they didn't know if it was going to start up uh, from the lunar surface. I mean, like it was a serious concern, so much mm-hmm. so that uh, that. Uh, uh, President Nixon had two speeches prepared for uh, the end of the mission. Yeah, and mm. the first one was, you know, this is a wonderful thing, blah blah blah, hooray for for us. And the other one was uh, the the sacrifice that these two men have made uh, because they can't ever leave the surface of the moon. It will not be forgotten, and it's a horrible tragedy. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And they didn't know which speech he was going to read until that mm-hmm. engine ignited. Yep. So I mean, so that's that's just how crazy difficult this is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing um, uh, there's a guy called Kevin Fong who's a, um, uh, a journalist, come doctor. Yeah, he is a doctor, but he he's done a lot with us with NASA and on nutrition and stuff like that and existence in space. Um, but he's also an A and E doctor, and he went round the shuttle when it was still fine. There was a program on the BBC about it. And there was a guy that was taking him round, and he walked past the shuttle, and the guy said to him, don't touch it. 
And he said, yeah, but I just want to reach up and touch it. And he said, why would you do that? Because, you know, these, these, these tiles, why would you risk putting grease from your hands on these tiles that means that they could ignite, they could dislodge, they could bear more heat than they're supposed to, and you put a risk, you know, the crew members, mm-hmm. just so you can touch it. Yeah, but I just want to, you know, I've got an, 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 a terrible urge to touch this thing. He said, everyone does, it's fine, but no one touches this. But don't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that critical, and we just don't get I don't get that. I, I'm the first to admit, I just don't, I get it, but I don't yeah. think about it. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, yeah, I want to go to the moon. No, I don't. I really don't want to. I'd shit myself if I went to the moon. I'd be like, no, I'm going to die. They're never going to get a spacesuit to fit me. <laughs> we've got to have a go. <laughs> we've got to have a building up there which is cast <laughs> iron one not made from cast iron because that'd be too heavy but you know what i mean it, it's got to be cast iron safe it's got to be absolutely this is an environment which cannot fail and then mm-hmm. we can send people to it mm-hmm. on a more permanent basis yeah. it's, i mean th- there's a reason why um, nasa and spacex like they tested the the crew dragon like the ejection system recently they basically blew up an, an entire rocket just to test whether the exact um, the ejection system would work, simply because they know well, they, they did do that. On, go wrong. They did that on the Saturn V as well, because that's when they put the mm-hmm. little jets on the top to pull the module away. Yeah, yep. mm-hmm. yeah, that's, like, that's a standard just, test. Yeah, it's a standard test, but why? Because they know stuff can go wrong, and they want to save the human lives. Like, I mean, that's the that's the only reason why that exists. I think um, if you look at Challenger, um, we'd got into a situation with Challenger where it was a routine thing. Going into space was mm-hmm. safe and fun and worth watching on the telly all the time. And mm-hmm. lo and behold, it wasn't, thanks to a cold Florida morning. And it, it just, it, you, you, need, you don't need that because people die. I'm not suggesting that. But what I'm saying mm-hmm. is the human psyche needs a shake once in a while to say, oi, it's not that simple. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that tragedy was, uh, well, it was a tragedy. And th- there were a couple of problems. The first one was people were looking at shuttle launches as routine, you know, like mm-hmm. getting on an airplane and flying to another city. Uh, but the other problem was there was a lot of pressure on NASA to uh, to make these missions happen and and make them come off like clockwork and make them look routine. Well, the military and, was pushing that on, wasn't it, as well, because they, was, they were launching military stuff. Right, and so mm-hmm. they uh, they started cutting corners and taking risks that they shouldn't have, and uh, and then the next thing you know, we we have uh, uh, a space shuttle breaking up on reentry. We have a space shuttle exploding on launch, and and neither should have happened. <laughs> Doc's watching. He says, "Why are you lot talking about shagging in space? From what I hear, you can't shag on terra firma." <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, I yes, can't. No, Jeff is right. I can't read that out, Batwinch, because it's libelous. Jeff's <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just gone I mean, silent. And, and the the um, the accident, like it literally, like it it probably cost us a lot of progress and like good ten, fifteen years in like space exploration because like i mean it was a shock and nobody really mm-hmm. wanted to take the risk anymore yeah. which is understandable yeah it was a shame as well because it was it, it was the un- it was the um the, the the other irony was the fact that Kristen mccauliffe was going up who was a school teacher and it was like you know we, we're even sending school teachers into space oh well actually mm-hmm. no we're going to go back to people who know the risk a bit more mm-hmm. um I don't want to make light of that because it was a horrible thing. I remember that day terribly. It was um, wasn't mm-hmm. good. I was shocked as well, and I was gutted because my grandmother, for my thirteenth birthday before she died, bought me a model of the space shuttle to make, um, and it was just before um, Young and Crippen went up and uh, and did their flight. Um, so mm-hmm. it was a massive part of my life as a as a teenager, and it was a massive shock. Yeah. I want us to go there. I want it to be great. I want it to be loads of fun, but. You know, I, I do sit back sometimes and catch myself thinking, no, it's not that simple. Mm-mm. Space is a very, very dangerous place. And it is completely unforgiving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Distinct lack of oxygen everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can see where that would be an issue. Mm-hmm. It's also freaking cold. It's colder than Siberia. Well, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? We've got to, if you look at Mars, I mean, they've got to go back to the moon because we can't get to Mars unless we go to the moon first and have a stage. Mm-hmm. 
there's a load of fuel potentially on the mar- on the moon as well, which can help us. You've got mm-hmm. helium three up there, which is great for us, which would power America for an entire year just for a small container load of it. But you, you then like, well, okay, I've got to go to unless we've got unless we can make water on Mars, then it's kind of pointless going there because we've got to take all the water with us and the water will never come back and it'll be irradiated on the way there and all that. And it's just like, that just doesn't. And it's heavy. Yeah. Uh-huh. How we, uh, yeah. We, I mean, that, that's the whole reason why we're looking for water on Mars. I mean, we've found some now, but like we're still looking. Yeah. There's water ice. We know there's water ice, but mm-hmm. it, it's just yeah, what we can we do with it, whether we can make it. And then the other problem you've got is if we find life on Mars, that's it. The policy from NASA is we're never going to go to Mars mm-hmm. because it's 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 a it's an ecosystem. Then if there's life on there, if there's a bacteria mm-hmm. up there that's functioning, we cannot go there. Mm-hmm. Which is then like, well, bloody hell, boys! What are we going to do now? <laughs> well, there are enough other planets we can go to. We, no, but you okay. So that's like saying <laughs> I'm going to hop across the skipping stones, the, the stepping stones, mm. to get across the, the Niagara Falls. <laughs> but actually, the second one we can't step on, so you've got to jump twenty feet to the next one. Off you go, <laughs> and Niagara Falls is the other oh, side yeah. of it. Well, I, well, but I mean, we're going to figure out a way. Like, I mean, that one because we don't have a choice really, and two because we're going to like. I mean, we're going to figure it out. It might take us longer, but we're going to figure it out. I just love the fact that Patrice goes, oh, yeah, there'll be other planets. You're like, yeah, but within a billion miles? No. And the next no, one's I mean, Jupiter. We, it's a gas giant. We, uh, Titan. I mean, <laughs> There's life there, possibly. <laughs> Nothing like Mars, obviously, but, I mean, I've heard, like, people have been thinking about going to Europa, for example. Yeah, but the thing is, we've got to send a probe, and it's highly likely there's life there, and if there's life there, we can't ever go there. So what you're actually doing is saying you're going to go from London to John O'Groats down the motorway and there's no service stations to have a pee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it is. It's a metaphorical we're gonna pee. Build, we're going to have to build one, like in orbit or something. <laughs> so what happens when uh, when another country or uh, a corporation decides, ah, screw it, we're going to, to the moon anyhow or we're going to Mars anyhow? Uh, or China. Uh, or, or yeah, Russia. I mean, it's not like we can uh, shoot <clears throat> down their rockets. I mean, that that would be an international disaster. I think as long as they obey the traffic signals, it'd be okay. You know? <laughs> oh, <accidents>. all right. <laughs> Hopefully the Federation will find us before then and actually shake some sense <laughs> into us. <laughs> we can Hopefully. live it up. <laughs> No cons. And who's next? <clears throat> who's got a story? I actually posted one oh, you a did? while back. Yeah. Are you mutter? No. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's you're, the app. You're mutter, of course. Yeah. Why, why would I? Why would, what, tell, would, what would we know? <laughs> of course, Chris, your mother in the chat room. But, yeah, mutter. Mutter. Uh, yeah, I uh, thought yeah. that was a joke, but that's actually a real story. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> uh, tin, uh, Tinder adds a panic button. Take yeah, us, oh, for so, God's sake, tell us more. So, uh, apparently, there was a recent uh, abduction uh, that was in the, uh, by a British man who uh, kidnapped a girl, ended up killing her, dumping her, and taking trophy pics of her body. And they, he used the Tinder app to, to locate her. And for me, I'm old school, you know. I, I did all my gift to gab up front. But, man, I have a friend of mine who who grew up with me but he recently started dating and he's using apps and you know dating left and right and i was like man the world really has changed and then it kind of hit me it's like oh my god my little girl's coming up in this world so i started trying to pay a bit attention to you know around these dating apps and you know the stuff that the, that these folks are using and so i i find this uh kind of dually interesting uh on one side of it you know anything that a company that you know provides access for folks to strangers to meet should do everything in their power uh to make sure you know they they create facilities to ensure safety so i I applaud any effort in in this and what they're doing uh in this particular case is they're partnering with a company called noonlight that if you opt in uh while you're on a date 
it they will the Noonlight partnership will actually track your movements, your location, um, and then it includes a panic button. So if you hit the panic button, um, they will first text you to make sure everything is okay. And then if you don't text back, they'll call you. And if you don't answer the call or you do answer the call and say you, you need help, then they'll send a police officer. So, um, you know, an extra step there. Uh, I know some people are like, well, why don't you just call the police? But you may not be in a situation, you know, there's, you, you never know what each in, in individual right. situation is. So anything you can add to safety is, is better. Um, and they also said that, you know, we'll have no access to the data to, to the tracking information. That was tender saying that, um, Noonlight will have that and we're not going to use any of the data for advertising or anything like that. So, you know, I actually find that part to be pretty good as well. So I'm just uh, kind of have you guys because I know some of you uh, probably dating. You guys use apps at all or are you not using the apps because that's what the kids do now. No, I, I am then, dating, but don't tell me wife. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, with your kids out there, boys and girls, you know, they're going to be on this stuff using this. So does this, you know, do these type of things concern you? I think you got to. I think there's rules you should be following anyway. Without things like this, like if you're meeting a person for the first time, um, you should be going to a very public place. Sure. Yeah. And and I would say mm-hmm. don't go home with them not till you've had a at least a couple of dates. Um, mm. You know, I mean, there's definitely your own safety rules to follow. See, now I I I am of the opinion. I was of the opinion where it was like Tinder was for people who couldn't get a normal person to like them and then i was with someone not two weeks ago and they showed me a picture of of their latest love interest and i was like well she's pretty but that looks like a picture of tinder though and he went well it was and i looked at this person it was just like i I would never have thought because i mean this guy was an attractive bloke good looking guy with a great physique in the prime of his life why does he need to go on tinder um, and I'm sub- I was Here's gobsmacked. A, I think yeah, it's just I what mean, they do. I, I, I think that might be a generational thing now because, like, I mean, like my age and younger, anybody, everybody's using Tinder. Like, Tinder is the probably. I mean, there are a couple of other apps, and depending on your like sexual preference and, and so on, like you can go to Grinder and some some others. But it's, I mean, dating apps are the way to 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 meet people. There That's are a lot like of people is. that uh, that aren't comfortable uh, going out, you know, like to a bar to try and find someone, or mm-hmm. um, or they just simply don't have time to go out and uh, and find events where there's a likelihood that they could meet someone, and mm-hmm. so services like Tinder take care of that for them because uh, it takes out all of that that time of trying to find someone and it gives you I'll call it a target rich environment where where everyone is there for the same thing they're trying to find someone to date okay. and uh, and I totally get why people are using services like Tinder uh, yeah. I I have never used a dating app and uh, um like like you know the the whole thing swipe left swipe right I heard people say that mm-hmm. but I don't know which is good and which is bad. I just know it, it's it's a thing. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I get why people would use services like Tinder because yeah. for for a lot of people, they just don't have any other place that they feel they can go and and look to try and meet people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can like tell you that personally. It is like if you're working like ten, twelve hours a day, like especially in a like high stress like management position and like, I mean, you're surrounded by, I mean, one dating at workplace is kind of an issue anyway. And then like you're surrounded by basically, I don't know, 85, 90% men. Well, you have to find something else. And like, if you don't have the time or the like, yeah, if you're more shy or whatever, like you just like you use an app. And so, I mean, I met my wife on <laughs> Tinder. I can tell that, tell you that. No, no, no I'm not suggesting. No, it, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. go on. Sorry, sorry Chris. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm interested because, uh, like I said, I got a little girl coming up, and this mm-hmm. is, will, be, will be the norm for her. So, does yeah. safety 
or uh, did that ever cross your mind um, as you were using uh, Tinder? And, you know, do you find this to be an adequate measure? Is there other things they should be doing? I'm, I'm just kind of interested in, around this. Safety is always an issue, like no matter what. It was an issue before Tinder. It was an issue when you were dating someone in a bar. Like it, it was always, uh, so let's, it was, let's be, is always an issue, unfortunately. Let's be clear that, that there used to be a place where you'd fill in a piece of paper and become a member of an organization that would then send you prospective dates and pictures of those prospective mm-hmm. dates. So it's nothing new. Video dating yeah. has been around for years before that. So yeah. the concept of, of having someone find you a person is not mm-hmm. alien. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's a, a bit different, right? Because if you were in a bar, you know, people saw you, right? And, you know, they could probably, yeah. maybe, you know, even though eyewitness is terrible, but somebody probably knew you, you know, maybe. Mm-hmm. Here, you can be a bit more anonymous, right? Mm, to some extent. I mean, all, I, I all guess. I don't ever use it, so The second you meet, you meet up, like... It's it, it kind of the, the issue is, I mean, someone can literally like you meet up with with, with a guy or girl. Uh, the other person can slip something in your drink while you're not paying attention. And yeah, I mean, stuff can happen like that happens all the time. But that's like, not Tinder. Probably not like the norm, but it happens. But it's not so to do I'll, with Tinder. It's not has nothing to do with Tinder. Yeah. Like it's literally you, have, you meet someone through Tinder. At some point, you're going to go out on a date. To be, honest, to be honest with you, uh, uh, we used to get lots of complaints of uh, women saying they were roofied. But when mm-hmm. you actually uh, worked out what they'd had to drink, they hadn't been roofied. They just drank mm, mm. Uh, a half a bottle of vodka or a bottle of vodka and uh, a load of Red Bull. Yeah, but then, I'm sorry, uh, we're not going light, to lighten that situation in any way because if, if a woman is drunk and is incapable of saying yes, that's a no. Let's oh, not, oh, God, let's yeah. not mix that up. But the thing, <laughs> but the things what I'm saying is, is that uh, I don't think I don't think roof is as 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 common as people think. I think a lot of people use it as an excuse for over drinking and then getting themselves into a situation that's dangerous. I think if you're going to, but it doesn't, person, it doesn't. Both, ma- both happen. Like it's. I mean, I mean it has it, happened, uh, but it's not as common as you think. Well, not in England anyway. Yeah, it's still, I mean, it, it, at that point, it doesn't matter. Like, how, like, however it happened, like, it happens. And that's that's exactly like, my point. The, the, it, it, no. That is not a thing. It, it, if you say, well, you drank so much that you didn't get roofied, that's fine. But you were <laughs> at the point of being incapable of giving consent. Oh, yeah. That's mm-hmm. a rape. But the, thing, but the <laughs> thing is, what I'm saying is, is that you, if you're going on a date from Tinder, you really should be keeping your wits about you, not drinking too much. Everyone uh, should. Uh, yes. Totally agree. And tell, and tell your mates where you are. But it's not Tinder. And have a mm-hmm. plan for a taxi home uh, and stick to the time. So maybe say, I'm going to go, I'm stopping till 10, then I'm going whatever happens. Mm. Uh, uh, and I, I, and I, if I'm not I, home I, by I, 10, my mates are going to phone the police. I absolutely applaud mm. the fact that Tinder are linking up with someone to try and make something to make mm-hmm. it safer to use their service. Well done. Absolutely. There is I, no I, negative I there, 100%. <clears throat> but... It is not Tinder's fault if you are incapable of protecting your own safety by making sure that you do not drink so much that you cannot decide to make an adult decision to do something with your own body. That's not okay for you, but it's also not okay for the person who who misuses that trust and does something that they shouldn't. That's still wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, on the other side, even though I've always, you know, I always get annoyed with companies that, seem to overstep with their tracking and their stuff like that. But, it, and you know, call me a hypocrite, but in this type of case, you know, I, I'm actually okay with it to some extent, right? Because, you know, I didn't know if my daughter went on a date and she disappeared, I'd definitely want to be able to track her down and, you know, mm-hmm. figure out what's going on. So, um, and- yeah, uh, hats off to them for doing something. You know, I yeah, don't know if I it's mean, enough. I mean, Jeff Jeff used an analogy there about, you know, there's people that aren't comfortable about going to a bar. I never got a decent relationship from going to a bar. I had a lot of, of, of great nights. Thank you very much. And it was good fun. And the person knew it was good fun. And I knew it was good fun because we saw each other across the room. We smiled. We hit it off. We had a conversation. And that was the end of it afterwards. But it, 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 you never meet people for serious relationships. It's a one in a million or a one in a thousand or a one in a hundred thousand to find someone that you're going to marry across a crowded bar. And it's the same with Tinder. Mm-hmm. Tinder's a crowded bar. But is it's that a the really standard? That's probably bar. a high standard. 
No, but what I'm saying is people have got this expectation about, I've got to be in a relationship, I've got to be in a serious relationship. All my sure, friends yeah. are in serious relationships. Therefore, I go to Tinder to try and find a husband slash wife. And actually, yeah. Tinder's no better than going into a bar, because in a bar, you'll only find a quick shag. You won't find a relationship 99.9% .9 of the time. So the point is that, you know, there is no substitute for meeting a person, looking at them, having a conversation with them, realising you've got plenty in common, and then taking it further. Now, if there's a facility to do that via some text messages, and then it turns into more, and then you decide to meet, and that's Tinder, then fair enough. But you still got to go through that step process of saying, I feel comfortable with you before mm -hmm. I go out and meet you. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. that's kind of what Tinder does. I mean, literally, I mean, you have the profile that gives you like a first indication of like, would I be interested? What are the interests? What are their pictures? Mm -hmm. Like, like, is it a total creep or something? But after that, it's texting and then meeting up somewhere public, hopefully for a date. But the like, problem is, that, what it is that middle process is bypassed significantly now. It no, is. it's not. Well, it, like it, actually, actually, you t I mean, you, you you chat on. I mean, at least what I've what I've seen other people do as well. Like you you message through Tinder, like you text, you talk, and then you meet up. Like there is a there is a middle process. Like I mean, it's not too long. It's like maybe a week or so, but it's like it's there. Yeah, but the thing is, there is an accelerated process through that, and it is used as a quick shag machine, the same as Grinder is for, for gamers. Uh, <laughs> it is, it's I a quick shag machine. I think you're oversimplifying. Like, <laughs> a lot of people have different expectations when they go to when they use Tinder. There are people that want a quick shag. There are people that want like want to get married. There are people that are just looking yeah, it's whatever, a dating for a friend. Service, like, it's, it's all kinds of people with all kinds of expectations. How do you know the pictures are real anyway? I could... That is an issue in itself. <laughs> uh, usually you can tell, but it, like, I mean, some people are really good. Like, um, search on Paul, Google. Paul, <laughs> mm -hmm. Paul says, there's danger on all dates. The last one I went, it, went on, I found myself married with a child. The horror is real. <laughs> oh. You marked that for comment of the year. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Quality. <laughs> I'm going to leave yeah, it there because I, I I know what Patrice is saying. And I know what I'm saying, but I'm I'm not mm -hmm. being that literal. What I'm saying is people are misusing it for quick relationships, if you like, and, mm -hmm. and that's where the danger comes, and that's where people aren't protecting themselves from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How do you go on Tinder and say, "Hey, I'm a bouncer" or "I'm a I'm a DJ"? I I don't have that. I wouldn't have that advantage anymore. Gosh, you, you, you lie. Know. <laughs> yeah, you can still put it on your profile. <laughs> I, I mean, guess. I'm a, I'm does it have astronaut. the same effect as walking in and actually seeing me DJ or seeing me at the mm. door collecting money? Yeah. Mm. No, it's definitely definitely a different. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, I mean, to, coming back to the point, I think it's, it's very good that Tinder is doing it. I mean, it's better than nothing. I mean, the services have existed before. Like, they're not inventing anything. I mean, they're partnering even with one. It's just a different platform. Um, but, yeah. like, it's still, it's still better than nothing. Like, even if, like, one person uses it because they didn't think about it before and now they have the option to get help or, like, get located, it, it's still a win. Like, I'm, I'm always a little bit cynical when... When um, like any services try to increase security, um, that always like screams a little bit like a PR thing they're trying to do to not sure to, to not be creepy. <laughs> yeah, but, but, um, but I think it's still a good thing. Like no matter what, no, no matter why they did it, it's still a good thing. Exactly, there's no negatives in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, who's not done a story? Uh, me. Just you, Muller. It's a little bit. Should we leave it to the last one? <laughs> you want to not do it at all? It's up to you. Uh, influencers being offered no, 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 definitely do it. Influencers yeah. being offered thousands for sex. Yeah, it's holy it's, crap. It's totally linked to uh, Big Chris's, really. This one. So men are, are, are looking at these uh, women who are obviously Instagram. Uh, uh, I mean, you often get that some of these Instagram models try to friend me, and they're usually photographic models, and I can quickly delete them because uh, my wife actually sees them. She might think I tried to. But you know, friend them, but the plan, there are men out there who are looking for these, uh, for girls online on, on these kind of apps and possibly Tinder as well. And then, um, offering them money, uh, for, um, holiday sex, um, uh, to be seen with them. Um, and it's quite horrible. It's, 
tent. It's a bit like that. What was it? Um, what was that movie where that rich man offered um, somebody a million pounds to have six and five? That kind of thing, isn't it? Indecent proposal. That's it. So rich, oh, right. Exactly. Rich, rich, powerful men uh, basically put in people very in an uncomfortable position. And uh, this one influencer says, um, there's many of them feel like they have to do it for some reason. I can't quite work out where that comes from. I missed the TV program. This is based on this article, based on. But uh, yeah, it's um, there's some horrible, horrible men out there. And uh, these women really need to take care and not go anywhere near them. Mm. So I'm kind of torn on this. And uh, because on one hand, you know, everybody has some kind of crappy opening line, right? It's like, you know. And the crappy opening line that I've got is, do you want 10 grand? <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it's like, hey, dad, you want to put 20 grand? And, you know, we can look, read the article. And certainly for the women that said no, props to them you know it's like hey you know you're not interested you're not interested but i also in the same token if a woman says you know what that's 20 grand for me i don't care props mm-hmm. to you too if you don't care and you feel safe and you know that that's your business you know i i don't know i guess in i've kind of changed in, in that regard over the years because of course you know we would shame the heck out of a girl that you know that even considered doing something like that and now i'm like you know what it's your business do your thing so i, I don't know i'm kind of you know, on one hand, I can see how, you know, we, you know, us growing up in the era we grew is like, you guys are gross and women watch out for these guys. But, you know, it's a different time now. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know if I'm necessarily willing to just condemn the ones and I, we'd be foolish to believe that no one has accepted that off. <laughs> Every single person was like, nope, not doing it. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm sure there are people who have accepted that. I've listened oh. to podcasts with women who talk about the offers they get and how they handle themselves. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, I'm not going to judge those 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 uh, ladies either. There have been documentaries and everything like uh, about services in like in LA, for example, that do that. It's, I, I'm with you on that one. Like, I mean, it's always li- a little bit like there's a balance. Like, it can go into exploitation uh, pretty quickly. Which definitely is not okay, but if like right. if if someone like man or woman like it actually exists in both directions, decides to do that and accept that and be okay with it, then like it's their choice. It's gonna be dangerous though, because I mean, if you go to a place like Dubai, like it's mentioned here, uh, mm. what happens <laughs> if you're sold into? Um, Slavery. Yeah. Hang on, hang yeah, on, hang on. Let's n- let's not just start saying that if you go to Dubai and you're a single woman, you're probably going to get into the white slave trade. Yeah. No, no, that's I'm not just a, that, that's but... massively over the top of of, of mm-hmm. the truth of the matter. No, no, I'm not saying it just happens in in Dubai, but you're going outside uh, of the norms uh, into a foreign country where you're not known. Um, they take your passport off you, and before then, you, you you're powerless. You could eat, and and uh, that kind of. Um, Sex slavery is going on. It's a massive problem yeah. in this country. Absolutely mm-hmm. massive problem. Um, particularly with Eastern European girls being whisked into the country. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, I, we, we've, I, we do some shoots here um, for models. And um, there's a few photographers have used the studio. And they've turned up with their model and done shots of them. And some of those models then put those pictures out on Instagram or out on social media and are therefore followed by the opposite sex quite heavily because the images that they've got are revealing. Mm. And at this moment, I'm talking about you, Sean. Um, And he knows who he is. He's been here several times. He likes taking his shirts off. He likes taking pictures of himself. He likes putting them on Instagram. And all of his followers are women. He is objectifying himself by the process of what he does. So mm-hmm. I'm sorry that I, this goes for both sexes. If you're going to take pictures of yourself with next to nothing on and show it on the internet, you're going to get people of all walks of life who will come forward and say things to you. 90% of the people will go, you're gorgeous. That's a lovely picture. Well done. And then there's 10% of the people who are lions to the Christians. And they will always be there. They will mm-hmm. always be there. The problem that you've got is that the aggressiveness of the male will always be more than... There won't be a female who will be that aggressive. But Sean still gets lots of lewd requests from women via DM asking him if he wants to come round and help them professionally. It doesn't mm-hmm. change. Jeff does, don't you, Jeff? 
It's just if you're gonna <laughs> if you if you're gonna complain about object, objectification, don't hold yourself up as an object. There's the point. You know, they should make a movie based on that. You know, maybe yeah. a girl gets kidnapped and then she gets whisked overseas, and the dad goes after her. Right? Wasn't that yeah. like yeah? I, th- I no, sorry. I think the dad should have a very particular set of skills because <laughs> mm-hmm. other, yeah. otherwise, the movie's just going to be crap. Yeah, I mean, what a line, line right? Should yeah, yeah. Be completely useless and like do nothing. <laughs> yeah, and then have the worst sprint in the history of movie making. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I d- he may not know who they are, <coughs> but he'll find them. He did, and he has to figure out a way to learn the term "good luck" in another language. Mm-hmm. Albanian, yeah. specifically, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. No, um, yeah. It sounds like it's going to be an amazing movie. Why don't you queue up oh, yeah. for that DVD? Says Paulums. <laughs> oh, Doc has just called it. He said I'd put Liam Neeson in that role. That sounds amazing <laughs> for him. Sounds perfect. Totally right. That's totally right. I see it now. No, yeah, I, I can see it. Too. I don't want to make light of, of something this yeah. serious, but there is a certain point that if you hold yourself out in the public eye, you are going to get abuse. I have two harassment orders against people who used to listen to these shows because they just didn't know when to let it go. And it, it, it does become a problem. Yeah, sure. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm an ugly, fat old man. <laughs> 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 If you hold yourself out in the public eye, you're going to get emails that you open one morning that just say wanker on them, and I have. Yeah. So. I just think it's very, very worrying. That I mean, surely they should have some way to block these. Well, they probably have, but I mean, block yeah, them properly. Sure. Um, you can. You can block them. That's the yeah. whole point. If you don't want that kind of thing, just block the person that's made the offer. Mm-hmm. But you've got to realise there are people out there who are going to make the offer, so just stay away from them when you get the opportunity. Mm. I, I tore one of the guys, one of the people that, that we've got a Harrison order against, I tore him a new arsehole. Um, and uh, when the police approached him, he said that I'd been mean to him. <laughs> 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 um, and it was, uh, he'd written to me uh, and he phoned me up at the, like midnight uh, on my mobile. Don't know where we got the number, but he phoned me up. And uh, I, I did, I'd, I'd worked out who he was. And um, I went online, found him, went to the cousin's house. He got nine companies that had gone bust behind him. He was registered on about eight different dating sites. So when he rang up the next time, it was like, well, at least I can keep a business running. Well, at least I can keep a wife. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up putting the phone down on me. And then when I told the police, he said, you shouldn't have done that, Mr. Rankin. No, maybe mm-hmm. I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've got... Um, I got a little sympathy, but not a lot on that one. I got far more sympathy with the other story that we just had. Uh, this podcast and all the others is brought to you by TSO Host. They are fantastic. They look after us, and we say it every week, but we really mean it. Um, all the shows that we've ever done are on our servers. You can go back and listen right to the very first Mac show and Big Show, back when we just did audio alone. Um, anything that you want, go to them. Use the offer code BTN20, and you get 20% off your hosting basket. Um, it is superb. You cannot do without them. But that's not what they want necessarily from us. What they really want is the social recognition, the brand recognition. So you have got to get out on the social medias and say, thanks at TSO Host for supporting at British Tech because that is what's important. So please, please, please get out there and give them that brand recognition. It's really, really crucial. And the other people we got are iMen Macs. Now, if you own a Mac or an Apple phone uh, or any Apple device, if it's got a few issues with it, then like a cracked screen, here's what is, uh, here's my old cracked screen, see? Dropped it on the floor, made a right mess of it. Um, they fixed it, and they gave me a brand new screen, and that's it, dead easy. Uh, they can do any iPhone model that you've got. They can also do stuff with your MacBook. So if you've got a damaged key or something like that, that's fine. Uh, if it's something that Apple aren't interested in, so say you've got a legacy machine, you're over five years old, but the thing works pretty well. It's just got a faulty cable maybe somewhere. They'll get in, they'll solder the logic board, they'll do all the fine stuff and uh, get it back to you. Any repair that they do, six-month warranty automatically on the repair, so that's not a problem. And if you've lost your data, don't worry, because they can even get your data back. And we had a photographer find out to us on, um, on Twitter today. He said he'd lost data. And uh, Ian Lewis recommended iMag Max to get his data back, which is awesome. We love him to bits. And make sure you tell them that you came from British Tech Network because um, you get a discount if you do. Mm, well worth it and again get out on the socials do thanks at I'm in Max for that British Tech please 
Right, time for the cool things. Start us off, Christopher. So one of the things that I've been doing lately is trying to, and I've talked about this before, is keep compacting all the stuff that uh, that I travel with. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I, I when, I, when my computer died for work, instead of getting a new computer, I got a, uh, I got a, a Surface Mini. And it's been the best thing. I've had it for over a year now. Can do my PowerPoints and everything on there and still travel with it and it's light as hell. And then I found a, a new travel bag uh, to use. Hold on one second. <laughs> Preparation is everything. <laughs> he's going over. He's going to get his travel bag. If you're not watching on audio here, he's coming back. He's got his travel bag. He hasn't got his earphones on, so he can't hear me taking the piss. All right. Okay, here we go. I'm going to be quiet. So. <laughs> So I'm a guy that doesn't want to wear a fanny pack. Yeah, so. fanny fanny's a different word in the UK, mate. <laughs> oh well, sorry. What do you guys call fanny packs over there? A, a, bum, a, bum, a, a bum bag. Bum bag. Yeah. Bum bag. Okay, I'm not into bum bags. <laughs> okay, but I wanted to find a really small backpack that could fit my surface and uh, or a sm- small bag that could fit my surface and my base electronics, and then uh, yeah. Here you go. So I found this little guy. It's, uh, it's called a Zenkata bag. I found it on Amazon. It's got a single strap, so it's definitely not a bum bag. It goes over the shoulder. Okay. Um, and it's uh, it's real nice, man. It's it got you know nice quality zipper, extra pockets inside, outside. My Surface Mini will fit right in there. My charger, and the one cool feature that I really like is the fact that it has a spot. On the inside, where I can hook up my uh, battery because it has the the ability to open in the back side. Uh, Let me get to it here. So instead of having to constantly pull a battery pack out of the uh, bag, I can actually hook one up on the inside of the bag and then... It has a charge port on the on the outside of the bag, so I can just plug a cable directly into the bag, charge whatever, and I don't have to take the battery pack out of the backpack. So I love this little thing, and um, it's gonna get some heavy uh, usage this year. So if anybody's like me and trying to continually downside their travel, pick up the Zenkata bag on Amazon. Excellent, mate. Cool. What did you say the price was? It was like twenty nine bucks, I believe. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, cool. Good price, mate. Uh, Jeffrey, what do you have for us? Well, first, I, I have just a little fun thing for you, and then I have my actual pick. So here's the fun thing. There's a guy that put together a, a website that has recordings of uh, dial-up modem uh, oh. handshake connect sounds. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, you know, for, for those of us that remember using dial-up modems all the time, it's uh, d- definitely a... Uh, uh, you know, nice and nostalgic. It's cool. Just one second. You used to be able to get up, didn't you? You could do phone freaking. Yeah, that's going to be boring now. Yeah, if you do a, a, a faster uh, modem, oh, there, no. you'll get more sounds. Because, you know, there, there's the different sounds for each uh, uh, connection speed handshake. Oh, that's AOL. That's AOL. Oh, good times. <laughs> oh, man. That takes me back. Could be copyright. You know, in, in, in retrospect, I'm thinking that could just be my pick because uh, it's so much fun. So, do you want my other pick, or do you want me to hold it for another show? Yeah, no, I just think if you end up playing that, you've got your speaker switched on on your computer or, or um, your your voice assistant, and suddenly it starts doing some crazy shit. Because <laughs> this guy's programmed it to do something. Yeah. Oh, that would you, be you, should, you should play that to your kids and see what they what they think about it. Oh, you, you know what? You, just, you want to say, a hey, lady, and then press play on that and see what happens. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, I'm assuming that uh, once it finishes the handshake, you, you hear uh, a man's voice say, you've got mail. <laughs> <laughs> Mork calling Orson. Come in, Orson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good pick, mate. I like that. But you've got a proper one. Go on. I do. So here's my my proper one. Um it's it's a it's a pen that I was given as a gift, and it's a titanium pen. And uh, um, unscrew the cap. There you go. Screw the cap back on the other end. And uh, so anyhow, so it's it's a very nice pen. It, it, it balances well, and uh, you know it's lightweight, but it's it's not so lightweight that it doesn't feel right in your hand. But the other cool thing about it is that it's designed so that you can use it's like over 700 different pen cartridges in it so whatever pen uh cartridge you prefer there's a good chance it's going to fit in here and uh you know and and it just like it unscrews and so uh, can you put like a a normal ink cartridge in there from a fountain pen and that kind of stuff and it'd work or yeah Wow. Yeah, the the cartridge that I have in here right now is um, actually it's I, the same thing as there we go. So this came out of my four color pen, and uh, so what I did was I I pulled the the little uh, uh, push button thing off the end, and uh, and then it just fits inside here. Without that on, wow. and you, you screw everything back together, and uh, you, you've got a pen. Swiss so, Army yeah. pen. It's a it's a really nice pen. So it's the the uh, uh, big eye design uh, Thai Ardo titanium pen. Uh, Eighty five dollars, but not that Jeff knew that because it was a gift. So there you go. Right. Excellent, mate. Lovely. Uh, Muller, what's your cool thing? Uh, okay, it's a. I just get it again. It's um, a podcast because I'm not really. Bu- I've bought some it, but I've not had it yet. So I'll get you the link. And it's called Film Stories by um, quite a well-known bloke. I think he must be in the industry. Uh, called Simon Brew, and he basically just talks in depth about a couple of films. Uh, if you're interested how films get to be made and some of the uh, what's freaking boxes. Oh, well, it's linked to that uh, other thing of um, Jeff's used to use them to... I thought um, that was your bloody link, you muppet. Oh, right, sorry. If you want to pick that, but that's highly illegal. (laughs) (laughs) Right, here we go. Because you know about freaking, don't you, where they used to get long-distance calls, particularly in America, using different boxes, different sounds. Right, okay. Sorry, moving on. So the film stories uh, is just an interesting podcast by this guy called Simon Brew, who clearly has... Uh, it links it into Hollywood because he seems to know an awful lot about the about the the way Hollywood seems to work and about how scripts get made and, and brought to production and talks about background stories about some quite famous films. Uh, I've only listened to a few, but they are quite interesting. Uh, well worth a listen if you've got nothing else to do. Excellent, mate. Yeah, cool. Good one. Uh, Patrice, what have you got for us? Well, um, I got another podcast. Um, it sounds weird. It's the most boring podcast you can imagine. It's called Sleep With Me. And no, it's not about having sex with someone. It's literally, if you have, like, I don't know, you live alone or, like, I don't know, you have any issues falling asleep at night, this podcast is for you. Because the guy has been doing it for I don't know how long. I think they have, like, 180 episodes, I want to say. And he does stuff like I don't know read read uh, uh, there was there was a recipe recently in the in the feed like I mean I, it, it's really crazy he reads the most boring stuff and it's intentionally that way like <laughs> he like no like nothing too exciting no really like, news or anything that would stimulate your brain anything like that it's like just one like I think it's an hour hour and like hour and ten minute long episode. We just reads everything just in one voice and just keeps talking and, and so on. No pauses, nothing. It's literally, it's intended to be lull you into sleep. It's really good. It works. Okay. So I can just highly recommend that. <laughs> You've given it a five-star review and said utterly boring. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. It's it's really it's absolutely boring. <laughs> I I have heard other people just rave about the podcast because mm-hmm. it it helps them sleep. Yeah, it's it's kind of the the podcast version of counting sheep. I uh, I've got an even better solution that I roll over to the wife and say, "How was your day?" Oh. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh no, no no oh thank god she doesn't watch this shit <laughs> or ask back when she tell us about if she moved all the stuff over to tso host um before i do my cool thing would you like to win a screen calibrator this screen calibrator is worth 150 quid we've got two of them to give away thanks to data color and a company in birmingham who market them called digital glue um uh, this thing is the best screen calibrator i've ever used and i've used loads i have to say over the years um, if you would like to win this, all you've got to do is go to YouTube, hunt for British Tech Network, and then like and subscribe to our uh, our photo show and the channel. Um, there is also British Tech Live on there as well, which we've got 345 subscribers on, so um, we can boost that up as well. So if you can, go to British Tech Network, because we want to start posting all the shows on the network address rather than the live address. Uh, we'll keep that for the live shows and stuff if we ever do them again but um uh, get on there and transfer your subscription from the network over to the british tech network address and uh we will pick two winners from the people who have subscribed to us and will be in touch and you'll get one of these uh my cool thing is uh it's a bit niche this one i have to say um now i don't know if you any of you know this but um we got uh we, i did a, a a podcast and i've got to i've got to edit it and post it um, but um, we did uh, a podcast for um, a company called uh, Videri. Um, now they do tanks, uh, and they do amazing tanks. And uh, Akil, who's the um, the owner of the firm, is just so knowledgeable. And he did his um, he did his his dissertation in uh, biophilic effects of tanks on people's work behaviours and patterns and that kind of stuff. And he does an awful lot of stuff in uh, offices to help people improve their productivity by putting in fish tanks and biophilia. Um, and he gave me a beautiful tank with some fish, and it's um, uh, he designed it to fit my job, uh, which is you know, on the railway. I've got petrified wood and I've got um, uh, gravel and that kind of stuff, which was lovely. But he said, you just need to buy yourself a heater because these are marine fish. So I said, oh, okay, that's cool. And he recommended that I go and find one that had got um, a temperature gauge on it. And if you've got a fish tank and you need to keep it up to marine temperature, this is a 50-watt uh, heater, but it's actually got the temperature of the water on the front, and it's also got a little remote control unit. So you can say, right, I want the water to be 24 degrees, and then it sits and it, it maintains it at 24 degrees, and that's it. It's got a little thermostat that cuts in, keeps it going, keeps it moving, and uh, it shows you that it's at 24 degrees. So you can see if you add new water or something like that, whether the temperature is starting to get low, and then you can wait until it heats up again and then add a bit more water so that you don't chill the fish too much. Um, it's a bit niche, I know. I get you, you don't all have marine fish tanks, but it was really, really cool, and the little bit of the right control unit was brilliant. So yeah. it just kind of got me. Yeah. If you want any of the links, if you really, really want a heater for your fish tank, that's fine. Go to British Network, BritishTechNetwork.com forward slash chat. Navigate to the 23rd of January and you will find all of the links, all of the cool things, all of the stories that we've done tonight. There. Right there. Right then, chaps. Where can we get a hold of you, Chris? You can always find your boy on the SMR podcast. Uh, go and check us out on smrpodcast.com, on iTunes and uh, the uh, Android uh, store. Um, just three of me, three folks, me and my homies, uh, talking tech, talking politics. See, every once in a while, talking whatever we may we may talk about. You know who's got the best uh, uh looking face one day, and who's oh. got the best beard the next day. So it's a lot of fun when you you cannot listen to us on this show and not feel like you've known us for ten years. So come check us out at smartpodcast.com. Awesome. Of course, you can catch me on Twitter and a little bit more on Instagram now. Well, right. Listen, good having you back, brother. I, I hope you're not going to be long before you're back again. I hope not, man. Thank you for having Love me. Love having you, pal. Love having you. Uh, uh, Jeffrey, where about you? Uh, I am over at textexpander.com and Jay Gamut on Twitter and Instagram, uh, the Mac show earlier in the day before this, and, uh, and I bounce around to a lot of podcasts, so I'm easy to find. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Muller, where are you? Muller Biker on Twitter. Uh, I'm also on Tinder, but my picture's not me. 
I thought I've changed it for some famous actor. Uh, an obscure one that you won't know very well. So come, come they and check they wouldn't out. be very famous then, would they? <laughs> well, <laughs> they did a few, you know, a bit of a background artist, you know what I mean? Yeah, the people have got to remember that the voice has got to match the picture a bit, mate. That's the trouble with you. I, mean, I, I could talk like a Peaky Blinder. Uh, thanks, mate. <laughs> Moving on. Um, uh, Patrice, where would you be? <laughs> Well, tomorrow I'll be assembling furniture, and other than that, oh, um, luck, yeah, every week here on the Big Show and the Mac Show, and everything I do on thepatrice dot com. Excellent, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back. Oh, so the photo show's back. So don't forget to go and uh, watch the photo show uh, and enjoy that. Um, and we'll be back again next week on Friday this time. So we, we, we just did this tonight because I've got to go to an awards evening tomorrow night. A friend of mine's up for an award and I hope she wins. Um, and it'd be great to be there while she does. But um, we shall see. I'll let you know on Twitter if she does. Um, you can get me at you and Rankin. You can get the network at British Tech. And you can follow my Instagram account on at 12 Space Media if you want to. Uh, back next Friday for the live shows as normal. 4 p.m. for the Mac show, 6 p.m. for the photo show, and 8 p.m. for the big show. Have a really great weekend. And uh, we'll see you afterwards. Take care. Thanks for listening.